In this uh, module, we are going to see how we can represent an ideal refrigeration cycle on a pH diagram. Now first, note that for any chemical substance, and uh, we are of course looking at refrigerants, that there is a very defined relationship between temperature and pressure. So if you look at the uh, pH diagram, on the left hand side we have the pressure expressed in bar and if you follow the horizontal line uh, you will see that where it crosses the uh, saturated liquid line there is a temperature and if you continue on to the right hand side on the same horizontal line you will see the same temperature on the saturated vapor curve. So we note that there is a uh, distinct relationship between the temperatures and pressure. Now in any refrigeration system there are always two pressures. One is the low pressure and the other is a high pressure. If you happen to go to a refrigerated warehouse and you walk over to the uh, uh, room where they have all the compressors and uh, all the equipment, that is being used to run the refrigeration system, you will always notice two pressure gauges. One of the pressure gauges will tell you the low pressure in the system and the other one the high pressure. Now from the previous modules you will note that the low pressure side is for the evaporator and the high pressure side is for the condenser. So on this pH diagram again we notice that there is a low pressure and a high pressure and correspondingly there is also a, uh, a temperature well, for low pressure we have the evaporator temperature and for the high pressure the condenser temperature. So in a problem that you might encounter uh, you will be always either given the two pressures the low pressure and high pressure or you will be given the two temperatures the evaporator temperature and the condenser temperature. So with those uh, two values, either of pressures or temperatures, we can proceed to draw the ideal uh, refrigeration cycle. Note that for most calculations involving the design or uh, evaluation of a refrigeration system, our goal is to find the three enthalpy values H1, H2 and H3. I'm going to enlarge the view for a uh, part of this chart uh, to, to see a little more clearly uh, what we have. And it will be good if you have a copy of a chart uh, separately that you can look at and follow along as we draw the refrigeration cycle. So we will use the low pressure or the evaporator temperature to draw a horizontal line. So as we see on this chart, uh, the evaporator temperature was given as 10 degrees C and uh, therefore we have drawn a horizontal line uh, that connects the uh, 10 degrees C um, both on the left hand side and the right hand side uh, under this bell shaped curve uh, and uh, we have the lower part of the cycle. Similarly, we will use the high pressure value or the condenser temperature to draw again a horizontal line connecting either the two temperatures so in this example uh, we have 40 degrees Celsius as the condenser temperature and uh, we have drawn a horizontal line on the top. Now from the point where the lower horizontal line which was for the evaporator where that meets the saturated vapor curve on the right hand side we will draw a line that follows the constant entropy curve. So we need to follow a constant entropy curve. Remember that the constant entropy curves are plotted uh, on the chart. Uh, so you need to follow uh, one of those curves so it slopes outward and, uh, and you extend that curve all the way to the top where it meets the constant temperature line uh, for the condenser. Now note that it can be sometimes difficult uh, to exactly follow a constant entropy curve but do the best that you can uh, either to visually interpolate between the neighboring 
uh, constant entropy lines or uh, if the uh, originating point uh, happens to coincide with where the constant entropy line originates uh, from the saturated vapor curve, uh, you can essentially follow that line. So note that the uh, constant entropy curve uh, inclines outward uh, away from the, uh, the uh, saturated vapor curve. On the left hand side where the top line for the condenser meets the saturated liquid curve, so drop the vertical line all the way to the constant evaporator temperature. So this gives us our ideal refrigeration cycle. Uh, note that we can now write the uh, letters E, A, B, C, D, uh, which if you recall uh, refer to the locations on the uh, schematic of a refrigeration system as we had seen in a previous module. Uh, note that for E to A we have the evaporator section, A to B is the compressor, B to C is where the superheat is removed. Note that point B is in the superheated region so to go from B to C you uh, first discharge the superheat and then from C to D is all the heat that is discharged in the condenser and uh, uh, quite often uh, the, uh, con the heat discharge for the condenser is considered to be from B to D. Uh, now from point D we have a drop in pressure uh, all the way to uh, point E which represents the expansion valve. Note that D to E is an adiabatic process. Uh, recall from your chemistry adiabatic means the enthalpy remains constant and that's why it's a vertical line the enthalpy at point D and point E is the same. So the expansion process is always an adiabatic process. Now we can view a short animation uh, where it shows again that we have the two horizontal lines and uh, for the low pressure and high pressure and then um, we complete the cycle uh, by following the constant entropy curve on the right hand side and a uh, vertical line uh, that drops uh, on the left hand side uh, from the point where the condenser line meets the saturated uh, liquid curve. So I hope this has given you a uh, introduction to how an ideal cycle is drawn on a pH diagram, on a pressure enthalpy diagram and uh, in some of the following modules we will uh, work with some examples uh, to see how we can get numerical information.